Hey, it's Chessie from Screegen Inc. And in this video, I'm gonna do a bit of a time trial. So we often get comments about our dryer being a few paces away from our press. And uh, this is actually because on the Big Buddy, the controls are all welded to one side. And this is like the configuration that we found works best in the studio. But we get this comment so much that I did want to quickly investigate whether they were on something and we were like wasting loads of time in our printing. So we've come up with a bit of a test and we're going to do 25 shirts in our normal routine, just walking them over to the front of the dryer, putting them through and even manually taking them off and stacking them. And then we're going to do what other printers are suggesting might be more efficient which is basically just bringing the dryer into the center of the room, which is a little bit inconvenient, but I really wanna figure out if it is really useful for the studio and our process. And then we'll just put them straight on the dryer without any steps, and we'll let all the shirts go into a box, then stack them, and then by doing this and timing both of them, we're gonna be able to see if it makes a real significant impact and whether we should really configure the studio. I'm going to try and keep quite a lot of the variables the same so that it's a bit of a fair test. So we're just printing exactly the same image on both sets of shirts. Uh, the shirts are the same, the design's the same, same squeegee, same ink, same belt speed and temperature on the dryer. And I'm just gonna be doing it on my own. And also I'm not gonna be doing it at like full crazy pace, trying to see how quickly I can print 25 shirts because I don't think that's particularly useful and I don't actually want to make any mistakes or be doing anything weird because I actually want to sell these shirts at the weekend. On your marks, get set, go. I'm not going too quick because I don't want to drop the squeegee in the ink because that would slow everything up. Also, I'm in a really good rhythm where once I've placed this one down on here, it's perfect for the shirt maybe three or four behind to be clear out the dryer. We're finishing the time when I get the last shirt out of the dryer and onto the stack on the table. We're on 12 minutes 45, but I just need that last one to get right out of the gate on the dryer. And I did my first 25 shirts in 13 minutes and three seconds. This is my usual setup and it felt pretty relaxed to print like that and then at the end I was just waiting for two more shirts to clear the gate on the dryer so that I could stack them up. So I'm ready to just quickly configure my room and space to what people have suggested and see if we go any quicker. We've quickly reconfigured the studio as to like the suggestions in the comments. So I have the t-shirts where they're not even a step away and the end of the conveyor where I can put the, the input side is again, not even a step away. It's just a twist of my body. And then they're just going into a box at the end like how the big studios do it as well. So technically this is a little bit awkward because if I'm printing at this angle, 
my cruiser isn't in its like locked set printing position but I don't think it's going to do a whole lot for a single colour and um, we've only just quickly configured this there might even be a better way um, we might even say if this is much much better uh, we could get an electrician in to kind of swap the panel controls over to the user side of the of the pre of the um, dryer and I could make this vent carry along and down into the dryer as well so there's improvements but I just want to make sure that this is much more efficient before I go ahead and take on board any of those suggestions two other super obvious things at the moment is like this is a major fire hazard because anyone on that side of the studio if this set fire um, if a sh shirt set fire they're, they're basically dead and also you can't use the embroidery machine at the same time because sometimes we have a massive embroidery going on as we're printing but that's not possible with this particular configuration on your marks <laughs> get set go So I found that when I'm actually loading the shirt onto the belt, I've changed the orientation because I don't think I can get them landscape. So I'm putting them on the belt like this. I'm kind of folding them into place and kind of even pushing them under a little bit. Not the ink part, but a bit more of the shirt than I'm used to. This definitely works with a little small center chest piece like this, but I think I would be stood here waiting for more of the shirt to get through underneath the dryer if that was like a big front chest. So for this particular image, it is working quite nice. I do feel like I'm being a bit more rapid. So I'm like just tucking it under so I've got this room for my next shirt. Screw printing is always pretty hot, but I am feeling the heat from that dryer like nothing else. Being that close to the to the heat source is um, it's quite significant really. And if I was next to the flash as well, I would just be getting hotter and hotter and hotter. But it's only a really short run, so I won't complain too much. There is another thing about this that I had no idea whether they were coming out nice on the end of the dryer. I always try and look at them as soon as I printed them, but I do give them a second look once they've come off. So I feel like there's one quality control point there that I actually didn't look at. So I got 14 minutes 02 which is slower which I didn't actually expect I thought that would be quicker and um, I'm hotter because I'm nearer this this oven and uh, I feel like I'm missing one of the quality control things of taking it off the dryer and inspecting it one more time um, also the shirts are much more crinkled than whether than as like when I just take them off manually and stack them straight away when they're nice and hot so in my opinion, I need to have a look at the footage, but I don't think it's worth it for us. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you found it useful seeing us make little changes and progressions. We don't think we're gonna move our dryer just because our setup doesn't really allow it. And we also thought of one other thing, which is that I wouldn't be able to be near the flash 
So I need to be able to look at the flash because it's not on an automatic timer or anything like that. So if it was all the way around the other side of the press, that would make me nervous. So thanks for the suggestions, guys, but um, we're going to stick to this. Um, sometimes it's difficult to see that other people are a little bit restricted in terms of space. So we've got a big column in the way and it's just where our plug sockets are and all that type of thing. So we are trying our best to be as efficient as possible, but we are up for recommendations and any other suggestions you've got, please do put them in the comments, don't be put off. We fund our YouTube channel by the sale of our Blind Maggot merchandise and you can pick one up like this one on the blindmaggot.co.uk website and we give all our squeegee viewers £10 off at checkout when you enter squeegee in the discount code section. If you could subscribe to the channel that would mean a lot to us and it also makes sure that you're notified of our next video and they're coming quite frequently now and um, put any comments in the comment section below, any questions or suggestions that you have for your studio and like and share the video if you think anyone else could find this useful.